Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Welcome back to Storytime with me, Brittany Nicholas. Today, I will be presenting Rapunzel, retold and illustrated by Fred Crump Jr. Rapunzel Once long ago, in a village by a distant sea, something curious happened. A farmer's wife gave birth to a girl child with hair seven feet long. The baby was named Rapunzel. With each passing year, her shining ebony hair grew longer. In the photo, how many monkeys do you see? Two, that's right. Can you show me two? All right. One day, not long after her seventh birthday, Rapunzel was watering the garden cabbage patch. As she worked, she sang with a voice that sounded like silver bells and happy birds. A sly old witch hobbled by and was enchanted with the beautiful voice. She decided to steal Rapunzel away and keep her for a companion. The witch, with whispered magic words, cast a spell on Rapunzel and told her to follow into the dark jungle. And her parents never saw her again. What colors are the witch wearing? Can you tell me? Orange? Yellow? And brown? Very good, very good. Many years later, a young prince named Komondi was out hunting in the jungle. He heard a beautiful sound like silver bells and lonesome nightingales. After a time, Komondi came to a very tall bamboo tower with a single tiny window at the top. And the delightful singing came from that window. He called out, but the singing stopped, and there came no answer. And most puzzling of all, the tower had no doors. Can you see the window? Can you point to it? Wow, you're on a roll. From that day on, Komandi rode from his palace to the strange tower every day and listened to the lovely singing. One day, as he came near the tower, he saw an old witch approach with a basket of food. He hid in the brambles and watched. The witch said, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, I know you are there. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your head. Then a beautiful maiden appeared at the window. She tied her hair to a rod in the wall, and from the anchored rod, her long ebony hair flowed like black silk down the wall. Looping the basket of food over one arm, the old witch climbed up the rope of hair and into the window. So, that is how it is done, said Prince Komondi with a happy chuckle. An hour passed and yet another. He burned with impatience for the old witch to leave. And at last, she came back down the rope of hair. She called up to the window, Speak to no strangers, or terrible things will happen. Then she hobbled off into the jungle. The prince approached the tower and called up. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, maiden, most fair, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. When Rapunzel heard and saw the handsome young prince, she was afraid. 
but he gathered a lush bouquet of jungle flowers and held them up with a reassuring smile. And for the first time since the age of seven, Rapunzel smiled back. She forgot the terrible warning of the old witch and let her hair fall to the ground. Quickly, Komondi climbed the silken rope and, for both, it was a moment of rainbows and moonlight and love at first sight. The prince and the prisoner sat on the floor and shared a festive lunch and talked. Words spilled out and over from both. They found so much that needed saying, and it ended with Rapunzel's story of the witch. Tomorrow, vowed the prince, I will bring you a ladder of rope and rescue you. And reluctantly, they parted with a hopeful thought. Wow. Does anyone else see the bird in the window? What color is that bird? White. Very good. But their plan of rescue was not to be. Rapunzel forgot to hide Komondi's gift of flowers. When the old witch saw them the next day, her anger was terrible to behold. You disobeyed me, she screeched. Then she picked up a blade and clutching Rapunzel's hair, hacked and chopped and cut it all off. Rapunzel collapsed on the floor in weeping and despair. Later that terrible day, Prince Komondi approached the tower. He called up. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. We shall flee from the witch who keeps you up there. The witch had tied Rapunzel's hair to the rod. Staying out of sight, she let the hair fall. She chuckled wickedly and sang softly, Steal my child away from me? Well, bold prince, we shall see, we shall see. <laughs> Rapunzel struggled to her feet as Komondi reached the window. She cried, Go back. But it was too late. With a terrible screech, the witch pushed the helpless prince and he fell back into space, down to the ground far below. Komandi fell into a tangle of sharp brambles, which blinded him. He struggled free from the thorns and fell in a faint. The witch cackled and chuckled and shook her fist. Now, Rapunzel, she hissed. Did I not warn you? Your brave prince lies blinded and bleeding. Come look. But the window was too small for two. As Rapunzel tried to see Komandi, she accidentally pushed the witch so that she, too, fell from the tower. The witch shouted the magic words that could turn her into a bat. But in her haste and fear, she used the words that made her a toad. When the squealing toad hit the ground, it became a scattering of sulfur, dust, and bones. And the evil witch was no more. Rapunzel climbed down from the tower on the rope of her own hair. Gently, she touched the bleeding prince and wept a shower of tears over him. 
Her tears fell softly on his wounds and stopped the bleeding. Then he slowly opened his eyes and he could see again. My eyes. Kamondi and Rapunzel held hands, faced each other, and smiled. The bad memories melted away, and the perfume of roses filled the air as the bramble bush blossomed from the magic of love. Then Komandi took Rapunzel to his palace for a life of days filled with sunshine and laughter. And she was never lonely again. The end. Thanks for listening.